this is Cody from Hedera Fibers and Apparel Studio, and today we're going to learn how to make felted vessels. So if you haven't gone through the basic tutorial and don't know how to felt, I would recommend watching our, uh, our other videos first before you get to this one, because there's a build-up between flat felting to felting a little bit of form and texture, and then doing form as well. Um, so a vessel starts out actually as a flat resist surface. I prefer to use uh, frosted mylar as a resist. You can use bubble wrap, which helps with agitations or some kind of other plastic, but I find it's just uh, plastic enough and also foldable and flexible enough, and it's also a little bit more rigid, so when I'm cutting it, um, it's going to be easier to take out of my form. Uh, and that's just what I like to use. You can use anything. Uh, flat felting is a lot like form felting, except for you use resist, obviously. Um, and so when you start, you're going to start pretty much the same. I'm going to try to use colors that I haven't used before. So I'm going to be on the purple, magenta, a little bit more red. Um, so important thing to know, if you're trying to get a specific uh, color scheme, like something on the inside contrasting with the color on the outside, um, you want to take note of that before you start. When I do forms and textures, uh, I always think about what's going to be showing up on the inside of the form uh, that's going to contrast with what's going on the outside of the form. So uh, when I begin, I begin exactly like flat felting, where I, in, and this one's a little curled up here, when I first start, I'm going to lay really thin sheets. in opposite directions of each other. Now it's going to start out exactly like flat felting. I'm only going to do one side at a time. Form felting is great for things like shoes and hats, bags, um, mittens, Socks, I guess, I suppose, if you want to. Um, people make clogs from felted forms. It's a nice way to work sculpturally, uh, whereas if you work flat with flat sheets, you're going to um, have a harder time building it up. You're going to have to sew them together, or uh, needle felt them together, I suppose. And uh, this works a lot better when you're thinking about a form that you want to be seamless. I think that's a good start. It might actually be a little bit too much um, because I want to do very thin layers and that way I'm going to incorporate them together as I go along. Uh, so when you're working on felting with form uh, and specifically when you're working on something round like this. So I have my insert on the bottom, this resist. And when I'm done felting this, I've felt it for about 5 to 10 minutes on the top of it. And uh, once it's nice and, and got it started, I'm going to flip it over after I remove my screen. And then I'm going to fold these edges over. And when they're wet, obviously, they're going to stick a little bit better to the form. And then I'm going to lay down my sheet, my new sheet of wool on this side, and flat felt this side. And I'm going to repeat that for however amount of thickness that I want before I move on to other textures or other things. So I'm going to felt this for about 5 to 10 minutes, and I'll see you guys in a little while. Alright, so at this point I have... Um, almost like a halfway felted form here, or flat here. And uh, it's it's really nice and exaggerated because I went back and I laid a little bit more wool on top of it. Um, and one thing I forgot to note that I'd really like to uh, emphasize is that when you're felting with a resist form like this and you're trying to make, I I'm personally trying to make um, a vessel, uh, you always want to make sure that the edges go over the form so that you can come back through and roll that on top of the back of it. Um, and I've seen this a lot when I do workshops, uh, when I give workshops for people, that when they uh, felt over the form, they don't leave enough of an edge so 
when they take the insert out of the felt, it, uh, it's got a seam on it. Um, and that's not exactly what you want. You always want to felt um, a little bit over the form, and it's better to be a little bit thinner than this. Um, something like this, like a cobweb form, is much, much better. Um, it's going to leave um, a seam if you don't do it just right. If it's a little too thin, it's, it's probably not great. If it's about this thickness, where I can just see my fingers through it, that's perfect. And that way the, uh, the felted fibers will in incorporate better into the opposite side of what you're felting. It's just important to note as you go along. So um, the soap gives me a little bit of an advantage in that it's letting it stick to the insert, which is great. It also has to do with it being mylar, which is awesome because it's a textured surface that kind of attracts that kind of hairy um, texture. Um, so I'm going to come back through and I'm going to do exactly like I did on the other side. Exactly like flat, flat felting. Very thin layers. The idea um, and the reason why we use thin layers instead of thick layers is, um, yes, thick layers will felt faster, but um, thin layers will felt better. You're going to get a much nicer, much smoother uh, transition between things. You're not going to have chunky little blotches everywhere. It's going to be very uniform and nice. Everything's going to incorporate well with itself. And that is why we do thin layers. It also gives a nice effect for um, color. Like uh, if you watched our last video on texture, um, the overlaying the colors in really thin sheets allowed it to gradate from one color to the next color very easily. I, I want to continue to push um, the boundaries of what you know in felt the further we go along in these videos. Um, so I'm probably going to do a little bit more extra in this one with um, playing around with more textures. And uh, instead of the textures being all about the fiber that I incorporate, I'm going to go ahead and um, show you something new. a little bit more color in it. I like that red, but I think it needs something else in it. Okay, I'll see you guys in a couple minutes. So we've done about two layers on each side, and I've incorporated the pink in with the red so it's blended in pretty nicely. Um, but I don't want this to be just a flat, boring color, or even just two colors. I want to add a little more texture into it and show you something a little bit new. So um, here with me I have a 100% of single yarns. These are from Hedera Fibers. Um, we have a mill. And when we start our mill up, we always have leftovers from drafting. And what we do with that is we save it. Um, I personally like to save it. Uh, they're just gleans. They can be used for all kinds of things, but um, I give them away sometimes. And I also have 100% wool scraps that I keep for just this purpose. So I'm going to leave a little bit on the side. And I want some nice color. Play. So I'm probably going to tangle them up a little bit more. I've also got some samples left over from long, long, long ago. And I'm going to take a little bit of these mini skeins out. So it has a nice color to it. And like I said, this is these are 100% wool. Well, this is a, um, a two-ply with a Tulsa silk. But it still will felt in with it. And if it doesn't, it still ends up being a very nice texture. And... Um, the way I'm thinking about this, um, the top of this vessel is going to be my opening. So the bottom I want to come around and kind of peek up to the opening. 
because I want you to be able to see it. I want an interesting surface that's going to be nice from looking at all angles. So I want loads of different color. So after I incorporate the yarn, I want to spread it out a little bit so um, that when I start with my roving, um, I'm going to have some room to let it come back down into the form itself. Um, and I think this time I'm going to go over with a little bit of this bright yellow uh, and dark brown and just little pops. And that will be all in preparation for what our final uh, texture will be, which I'm going to show you after I'm done felting this. So I've actually I've flipped this over and I've already folded over all the yarn onto the other side. And um, it's at this point I realized I should have mentioned that uh, as you get chunkier, um, as your layers build up, you're probably going to want to switch from just a paper bag um, to a little something more agitating. So what I've done is uh, I've taken several paper uh, plastic bags in a paper uh, plastic bag, sorry and I put it underneath a piece of bubble wrap and this is acting as my agitation. And I can get much deeper this way. I can really dig down into those layers and cause some felting to happen down underneath of it. At first when we were just beginning we were doing very light pressure again um, to refer back to the beginning tutorial. You'll go from a light texture, which is felting the top surface, down uh, to a harder pressure, which is going to felt those layers together. Especially when you add things so chunky like this, like this yarn, um, it's really important to get down in there and really uh, add some friction to make sure that all of your layers are incorporating into each other. At this point, I want my seams to be very well blended, so I'm kind of leaving alone these edges. These are going to remain kind of unfelted so that I can peel up, flip over, and then these are just going to be frayed out. I'm going to pull on them and then slick them down, and that way you can't tell where my seams are. So now that I've felted down all my yarn, I want an extra texture. Um, I, If you remember correctly and you've been following along with the videos, uh, this was the insert that I used last time for uh, the flat fold when I added the lily in. And I wanted something to protrude off of the surface because I want this texture to be more in the background. Um, so what I did was I created a bunch of smaller inserts that I cut with bubble wrap. Um, and so I cut them with bubble wrap for a specific reason. You can use frosted mylar, but unfortunately the frosted mylar is not always easy and I know from experience doing workshops to find and take out when you're done with your form. So I am hoping that bubble wrap is a little bit thicker and it's going to be a little bit more noticeable in the form when we start um, cutting things open. So I'm just going to place these around. Some really good artists to think of when you're thinking about texture and felt. Um, one is Margaret Wertheim, who uses uh, Margaret Wertheim and then Diana Tamine. Diana Tamine is a scientist who developed a um, a method for for modeling hyperbolic uh, structures like coral reefs. And then Margaret Wertheim is another artist who uses the uh, hyperbolic crochet to make core reef forms. Um, you might also, there's another one, and I'll post her name down at the bottom, who does really in-depth uh, felted textures. So this looks good. I might actually put a little bit, maybe one more in there just to get some more interesting because I want to save some of this color in here. And I'm thinking of breaking up this seam on the outside. 
and that way it looks more intentional if I should have something that's a little bit thinner. Let me put this right there. It might take a minute. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and lay over my my felt, uh, my next layer of wool, just like we did the lily pad, but this time I'm going to cover the whole thing. I'm not going to just put it in the center here. Uh, I'm going to cover the whole thing so that it's a complete layer. And that way, um, when we're ready to cut open the form and make this a felted vessel, I'm going to come back through with my scissors and I'm going to cut out this design. And that way I'm going to have these, hopefully have a structure that's going to protrude outwards, kind of like this, and you'll be able to see this texture underneath of it. So we'll come back and you'll get to see that. So I have added several layers, about three on each side, and then I went ahead and, and fold um, on both sides. I rolled it up and I twisted and, and shimmied and shaked. Um, now we have something that's uh, ready to be open. So let's get to it. Now you can open it on any side, uh, depending on what kind of shape that you wanted. If you wanted something like a handbag, maybe you could open it up on the side here. But I want something that's going to have form. Um, and normally for that, if I wanted it to be more round, I would turn it inside out. But I know I have texture on the side. So I'm just going to come back in through here with my scissors and make a small incision. I try to make it small layers aren't quite filtered together. I try to make it small because I can open it up and that way it doesn't look like I cut a hole in it. Uh, it's important to do this before you wash it out, before you do your shock baths, because the soap again is the vehicle and it's going to help those fibers slip around. Now I am just going around in a circle to open up this hole a little bit so that I have something that's stretched out. It doesn't look like I cut a hole in it. Just stretching out the fibers. You can see it's fairly thick. Now all the layers uh, are not quite felted together and I can tell that because I can pull the part here and cut an opening here which is not quite what I wanted. I might go back and felt a little bit more before I take anything out. Just do a really good thorough felt. I'm not concerned about the surface because I know that the surface is felted and it's not going to move around on me. I'll just go back and fold it a little bit more before I open it up anymore. Alright, so now that I've cut it open and I've folded a little bit more, I actually used a technique um, not like the one that I showed before in the basic felting tutorial. What I did was I rolled my work up onto a cardboard um, roll. Let me see if I can find one. <clears throat> I do this when I'm felting a lot larger things. I'll use a cardboard roll and I'll roll the bubble wrap and the piece onto it, tie it on, and then I'll attach a towel, uh, wrap a towel around it. And then instead of with my hands, I use my forearms and my fist, and I roll it back and forth. And that's uh, the agitation that's causing all these layers to like felt together. And there's still a little bit of, um, still there, some of the layers are still a little loose, but it'll be all right. I'm sure um, I felted it enough. It certainly feels felted enough. So I'm gonna remove my insert now. Now bubble wrap is certainly going to be harder or easier to remove, but it's not as uh, firm and the firmness helps it felt. So now we have a form that is open, but if you remember we have the bubble wrap to remove. So now my chore is to find all the areas that I've put bubble wrap on. I believe this is one. So now I'm going to go around and cut out all the bubble wrap stencils that I used, and I'll see you in a little while. 
So I'm done cutting my inserts out. Um, I can't say that I really care for the way it looks. I do like the forms that happen though and the textures that happens and that was really the goal of today. After I was done cutting it, I kind of went back and cleaned it up with the scissors just to make sure everything was round and didn't have jagged edges. It was a little hard to find where the inserts were, but with a little practice and if you feel on the surface where it's spongy, you should be able to find just fine. Just a final look at the form. I do, um, I, I do like these forms. I don't like the vessel itself as a vessel. I might do something else with it. Maybe uh, make something that's upside down, so I might stuff it maybe, and then do a little bit more with it that way. Well, I hope you guys have good luck. Um, make sure to comment and like and subscribe. Um, you can visit our Facebook page and our Instagram, which is fairly active. Also, make sure to visit our Patreon page and give us some support because we do need it. Thank you very much.